I'm Brody, a cloud support engineer here at the AWS office in Sydney. Today, I'm going to show you how you can troubleshoot access denied or unauthorized operation errors in AWS Identity and Access Management. Let's get started. For this demonstration, I'm logged in as an IAM user. For simplicity, all resources in this demonstration are located in the same AWS account. For cross-account access, troubleshooting steps differ slightly. Here, I'm attempting to upload a text file to my Amazon Simple Storage Service bucket. However, I'm receiving an access denied error when calling the put object API to upload my file to my bucket. To troubleshoot this issue, let's first check the IAM entity that we are calling this API from. We can find this in the AWS Management Console by selecting the arrow beside the account information. Notice that I'm logged in as the IAM user, IAM user. We can also check what credentials are configured in the AWS command line interface by running the get caller identity command to identify this calling entity. Now that we know the IAM entity where we are receiving the access denied errors from, let's continue to investigate the source of these errors. When evaluating whether a request is allowed or denied, IAM evaluates various policies before coming to a final conclusion. This evaluation includes Organization Service Control Policies, or SCPs, Resource-Based Policies, Identity-Based Policies, Permissions Boundaries, and Session Policies. By default, all requests in IAM are denied implicitly if a policy lacks an allow statement for the action. This is known as an implicit deny. The requests are denied explicitly if there is a deny statement for that action in any policy. This is also known as an explicit deny. Note that the existence of a deny in any policy will override any allow for an action. For more information and a diagram that shows the order that IAM follows when evaluating these policies, see the determining whether a request is allowed or denied within an account documentation, linked in the Associated Knowledge Center article. Now, I'll attempt to call the put object API to upload the file a.txt to my S3 bucket, Brody's bucket 1. You can see that the operation was denied with an error, access denied, on the put object operation. Remember that IAM first looks for the existence of any explicit denies in any policies. Let's return to the console and check whether any SCPs are present on our account that might be impacting our ability to call this API. An SCP is another type of policy that you can use to specify the maximum permissions of an IAM user or role. SCPs can be applied at the account level or at the OU level of an AWS organization and will be inherited by all entities of accounts beneath the level that it was applied to. Also, SCPs can be checked only from the management account of an organization, so keep this in mind when troubleshooting these types of policies. When we log in to our management account and open the organization dashboard in the console, we can find the AWS account where our user exists and select it. From here, if we select policies, we can see all the SCPs that are inherited by this account. If we select the policy test deny put object, we can see that this SCP explicitly denies access to put object for all resources. Let's update this to allow this action because this is the action that we are looking to perform with our IAM user within this account. Now, let's go back to the AWS CLI and try to upload our text file to our S3 bucket again. We're still receiving a similar access denied error, so let's now check whether our bucket has any resource-based policy, which is also known as a bucket policy, that denies our ability to call put object. Let's head over to the S3 console. Select our S3 bucket and navigate to the Permissions tab to check whether there is a bucket policy. In this case, we can see that there is no bucket policy. However, for resource-based policies, an action can be allowed in either an identity-based policy, a resource-based policy, or both, but an explicit deny in either overrides the allow action. Now, Let's check our IAM user to be sure that they have sufficient permissions to call the put object API in their identity-based policy permissions, 
and be sure that they don't have a permissions boundary policy that's denying access. When we check the user's identity-based policy, we see that they lack permissions to call the put object API. They also have a permissions boundary attached, which is only allowing all EC2 actions. Permissions boundaries specify the maximum permissions that an identity-based policy can grant. So even if our user had access to call put object in their identity-based policy, our request to call put object will be implicitly denied because our permissions boundary lacks this action. Let's update the permissions boundary to include S3 put object by navigating to the policy and adding this additional API. We can do so by selecting policies, selecting our boundary, selecting edit policy, and adding the additional S3 put object action. Now, let's also add S3 put object permissions on our user's identity based policy by navigating to this policy, selecting edit policy, and adding the S3 put object action. Note that permissions boundaries can't grant permissions on their own. The IAM entity must still include the action in their identity based policy in order to perform that action. Now that we have evaluated these policies in the order that IAM evaluates them, Let's try again to upload our text file to the S3 bucket. That worked. Our call to put object was successful and didn't encounter any explicit or implicit denies from any policy sources. If you are using IAM roles or federated users with session policies, these may contribute to a final decision of deny. And we talk about that in the session policies documentation linked in the Associated Knowledge Center article. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.